no sex, no drugs, no alcohol. We're either talking about church or straight edge punk rock bands, or we're talking slasher films at the horror movie syllabus. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Horror Movie Syllabus. I'm Professor Victor, and I'll be your host as we go through all of the essential, noteworthy, must-see, and downright notorious modern horror films. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you check out our introduction video. I always leave a link to that in the description below. But in short, here at the Horror Movie Syllabus, we like to look at three representative examples of a particular subgenre of horror. Today, the subgenre we're looking at is slashers. Now, some of you might have seen that we already did a slasher icons video where we hit on all of the slasher icons, all of the big names in slasher movies. This video is to talk about the rest of the slasher movies, the, the movies that don't feature an iconic slasher killer, uh, the movies that really are more standalone, or if they have a franchise, they were never uh, really quite at the level of iconic. If you've watched some of our other videos, you know that the slasher subgenre is one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite, subgenre of horror. So it's nice to have an excuse to talk about a few more slasher films. And the three that we're going to talk about today are three really, really good ones. Now, for those of you that are a little bit new to slasher movies, uh, just a little bit of background. The slasher movie arguably was created in the 1960s and really kind of defined in the late 70s, but dominated the horror genre in the 80s and 90s. They were inescapable. There were so many slasher horror films, especially in the 80s, that... The market got saturated with them, and we talk about this a little bit in one of our other videos and uh, the importance of Scream to the slasher genre and to uh, horror in general. But there is uh, a lot of slasher movies uh, during this time period that are noteworthy, and there are a lot of fans that have a lot of affection for this subgenre, myself included. So it felt worth it to have an additional subgenre to further explore the slasher craze, if you will. Now, as I alluded to in our cold open, uh, the slasher movies tend to be a bit of a morality tale. Uh, people who smoke, drink, do drugs, do bad things or bad things, vices, uh, tend to be the ones who get killed. And the the good person, the the good girl, if you will, winds up being the final girl who, who survives till the end. And it's funny because a lot of uh, conservative groups would uh, push back on or object to or, 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 or criticize slasher films. Uh, they didn't like them very much, even though the core values of the slasher film tended to align really well with these conservative groups. Uh, uh, and on the other side, uh, liberal groups tended to decry the treatment of women in the movies uh, as victims uh, to be murdered, where the final survivor of the movie is almost always female. Uh, in fact, they call it the final girl for a reason, because it's usually a final girl. Uh, and she's always shown to be resourceful and not dependent on a man and very smart and capable. So uh, arguably a feminist take uh, from the slasher films. So it's interesting that both the conservative groups and the liberal groups would have issues with horror films that tended to also uh, represent some of the values that they espouse. But I always say that if you uh, have both the right and the left uh, kind of criticizing you, you're probably hitting the target square in the middle. So uh, I think that's what slasher films tended to do. They tended to find a way to both uh, appeal to and uh, alienate everybody. So uh, that's always kind of fun. And I think that's part of why their appeal has endured over the years and why the fan base for slashers uh, is so fervent. Now, as I said a little while ago, we're going to talk about three of the better slasher films to come out over the years. And as we usually do in the horror movie syllabus, we've ranked these movies as undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate. And in this case, those levels are going to determine the level of disturbingness of the movies, going from least disturbing in the undergraduate level to most disturbing in the postgraduate level. But with that, let's go ahead and get into the movies. Our first movie and our undergraduate selection is The Burning. Now, The Burning is a genuine horror classic, but it's interesting because it's never really quite achieved the notoriety of the, the slasher icon movies like Friday the 13th or Halloween, uh, nor does it really seem to have a lot of brand recognition outside of true horror fans. And it, I don't really know why other than to say that you know the market did get flooded and this was one of the earlier entries into it. Uh, and they didn't franchise it. There was never really uh, you know, a franchise of a bunch of sequels made out of it. But it's kind of a shame because it's a really good movie, and it really does follow the slasher movie tropes, 
it's set at a summer camp, a bunch of kids getting stalked by a killer, which is kind of the plot of pretty much every slasher movie. Uh, and, but it does it well, and uh, the kills are pretty imaginative. It's also noteworthy in that it was a, the early start for um, Jason Alexander and Holly Hunter and Fisher Stevens. and You see that a lot with some of these horror, uh, horror movies in the past, especially slasher movies. You see uh, like Kevin Bacon getting it started in, uh, in Friday the 13th and Johnny Depp getting it started in Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, you see these famous actors who got their start in these you know, low-budget horror films, and it's always kind of fun to see that. This movie is by no means a work of art or any kind of uh, uh, achievement of filmmaking, but for its budget, it's really well made, it's really well shot, and uh, it delivers on scares. It, it's a satisfying movie. Uh, I do like it quite a bit, and uh, it does have, like I said, a bit of a horror cult following. It just never really quite got the mainstream success that it probably deserved. I also really like that it works in the urban legend of Cropsey, a New York urban legend that, frankly, I don't know that much about because I'm, I'm a West Coast kid, but I like that it worked it into that movie. Side note, there is a documentary about the Cropsey urban legend that's definitely worth checking out. Uh, we might even talk about that later on in the horror movie syllabus, but it's definitely worth checking out. So yeah, if you haven't checked out The Burning yet, check it out. Let us know what you think. It's definitely worth watching. I do feel it's one of the better representations of the slasher film. It really uh, is kind of a quintessential example of what a slasher film is. So for that reason alone, I definitely think it deserves to have uh, credit as one of the you know the top three slasher movies. Uh, I also just really like it. I think it's really good. So check it out if you haven't. Now, our graduate level selection is one of my favorites. I, I have a lot of love for this movie, and that is Sleepaway Camp. Now, let me be clear. Sleepaway Camp is not exactly a good movie. It's very low budget and not particularly well made or well acted. Uh, in fact, I would say the best thing about Sleepaway Camp is the poster. Uh, it had a great poster. In fact, uh, as a kid roaming the video aisles back in the day when there were video stores and you'd rent VHS tapes, uh, I, I remember seeing that on the shelf, just like right there. And it was so appealing, so eye-catching, that, that knife through the shoe is really cool. And I remember I had to see it because of just the, the, the box cover alone. That's not the reason why Sleepaway Camp has endured as a cult classic and as a monumentally memorable horror film the reason why is because of the ending and i will not spoil that ending for you here even though it's probably been spoiled through the internet uh, over and over again and if you've managed to avoid having it spoiled for you i'm not going to be the person to spoil it for you because it really is one of the greatest horror endings of all time uh, up until that point, the movie is your standard slasher flick. Again, uh, kids at a sleepaway camp, hence the title, uh, getting stalked by an unseen killer. And there's a mystery aspect to it that is very reminiscent of early Friday the 13th in a good way. But the movie isn't super well made. Uh, it's, it's, it's cheap. Uh, uh, a lot of fun has been poked at the fact that it's clearly fall <laughs> in the film, even though it's supposed to be summer camp. Uh, the acting is much across the board bad there's not uh, a lot of great acting in there and a lot of them the actors especially the side characters are are local people but that all just adds to the charm of it it, it really is a, a charming movie like it's maybe two steps above a do-it-yourself movie but it's it still works it, it it's got enough love behind it and passion behind it that you can kind of forgive these shortcomings like the unimaginative camera shots and the the subpar acting. Uh, it, none of that matters because it's enjoyable. That said, it's only super noteworthy because of that amazing ending. And uh, I, I, I'm sorry to even tell you that there is an amazing ending because it would be awesome if you just went in without knowing that. But the fact of the matter is, without that awesome ending or without knowing about it, you probably wouldn't even give the movie a chance, or if you did, you might not even get through all of it because it would just be mundane. You'd have to really love slasher movies in order to watch this movie straight through and get to the good stuff at the end. Now, this movie is technically a franchise. There were several sequels that were made, uh, none of them, of course, having any kind of impact like the original did, but they are all still fun in their own right. In fact, uh, the sequels really leans into the camp aspect of Sleepaway Camp. It really, well, it doesn't kind of disregard or abandon the horror aspects and it still has the gruesome kills it really just kind of firmly plants its tongue in its cheek and starts having fun with it uh sleepaway camp two and three are particularly fun they star pamela springsteen 
Yes, uh, that's Bruce Springsteen's sister. Uh, and she is a blast in the movie. She she just chews scenery. She is so over the top, bug nuts crazy. And it, she's she's a big reason why those movies work. None of them are must-sees or great, but if you enjoy the first one, and if you enjoy slasher movies in general, I would definitely recommend the rest of the movies to you. They're a lot of fun. There is one sequel, Sleepaway Camp 4, that is uh, not particularly good. It's actually basically a clip show. Uh, I actually have a copy of it right here, although it's really hard to find because it's out of print, and, and that's a good thing because it's, it's not worth watching. It's, it's pretty much just a, a rehash of, of movies that you've already seen before, so you can skip that one. But the other ones, I would definitely say go ahead and check them out. If you like Sleepaway Camp 1, uh, or if you just like horror films, uh, slasher horror films in general uh, they're all fun check them out uh, I, I would definitely recommend them but at the very least check out the first sleepaway camp it's it's a horror classic for a good reason and uh and without spoiling the ending leave a comment down below what you thought of the movie uh and how you felt about it and our last movie that we're talking about today the postgraduate level movie is maniac now, Maniac's a little bit different from the slasher movie formula in the sense that it's A, not taking place at a summer camp, and B, it is not really about a bunch of kids getting stalked by a killer. It focuses on the killer himself. It, it, it kind of gets into his head as he stalks women and murders them and scalps them to um, add to his mannequins. I don't know. It's, it's a little bit of a strange movie, and it's a very grimy movie. Uh, it's kind of gross and i don't mean gore gross although there is that into it but it's like uh like it's an uncomfortable dirty feeling watching this movie uh that's due in no small part to the lead joe spinell who plays the killer and that's not a spoiler alert because the killer's identity is not is not a mystery joe spinell is gross in this movie in a very effective way in fact this this is kind of a uh, uh, amongst horror fans, kind of a noteworthy or famous performance. Joe Spinell's name is really well known for this performance. He's gross. I mean, he's great in the film. He's he really plays it well because he's just uncomfortable around. Like even when he's not killing people, you're just uncomfortable being around him. But you're put kind of in his shoes. You're you're kind of like in his head or seeing through his eyes in the movie. Uh, and a lot of the horror movies, the slasher horror movies, like to play with the POV shots. Uh, so you're kind of seeing through the slasher's eyes. That's one of the critiques that a lot of the uh, critics of movies, uh, these slasher movies have, is is that the, the the audience identifies with the killer rather than the victim. But I think that's part of why the audience enjoys them. It's more fun to be the predator rather than the prey. But Maniac really goes deep into that. You get into the psychological aspects of the killer and what's wrong with him and what's been done with him to make him this way and why he has this skewed view of the world it's very effective and, and you'll just feel like you need a shower afterwards it's just ugh. um again i'm making it sound like it's this awful experience and it, maybe it kind of is but it's a good movie you should definitely see it it's 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 got its reputation for a reason it's very very uh effective at what it does but that said it may not be for everybody some people might really be uncomfortable with the way that this movie portrays frankly the world one noteworthy thing about this movie is that the effects were done by uh, horror special effects legend Tom Savini, who is you know, famous for many movies, not the least of which is uh, Friday the 13th, one of the famous, uh, one of the most famous slasher movies of all time. Tom Savini actually even has a small role in the movie, and it has one of the most famous kills possibly in slasher movie history, uh, where the killer shoots Tom Savini in the head with a shotgun and his head explodes, and it is an incredible effect. It just looks so gruesome. Uh, and it's kind of cool because it's Tom Savini who created this effect and it's Tom Savini letting himself get killed. So that's a, a noteworthy, uh, it's just kind of a side note that the noteworthy scene in this movie that is pretty famous and well known and, and part of the reason why we had to make this make the uh, horror movie syllabus list is because that scene is so noteworthy, so iconic. But the movie itself, definitely worth checking out. Um, uh, it has a, a remake that came out a few years back uh, starring Elijah Wood made by uh, Alexandra Aja and if you're a fan of the the French New Extremity, uh, or if you're just a fan of uh, modern remakes, uh, gory remakes of, of B movie, B horror movies, uh, Alexander Aja's name might be familiar to you. We will be talking about him in the future in the horror movie syllabus. That movie's good too. It's a little bit more production value, a little bit better production value, and uh, it's it's uh, 
it really takes the uh, going looking through the eyes of the killer to heart. Uh, it really doubles down on that concept. It also is an uncomfortable movie. Uh, it's maybe a little bit easier to swallow than the original. I don't know. I, a lot of people like that one better than the original. I'm not sure I'm in that camp. I, I'm kind of undecided about that, but I think they're both really good. But especially younger audiences might enjoy the remake a little bit more just because the production values are a little bit better. It's a little bit of a cleaner movie, a cleaner looking movie, a little bit more of a modern sensibility in terms of presentation. But uh, I'd still say see the original just because I feel like your horror movie education might be a little incomplete without it. And that's, again, a big reason why we've made it uh, part of the horror movie syllabus. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. If you have seen it, let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I, I want to know, do you feel it's as grimy and kind of uncomfortable as I do? Or do you think I'm being a little uh, overreacting on this one, uh, a little bit sensitive to it? Let us know what you think. So those are our picks for the three best slasher movies that are not slasher icon movies. If you like slasher movies and you are looking for a few extra recommendations, we've got some extra credit movies for you to watch. The first one we're going to mention is Prom Night, which is a, a bit of a cult classic in its own right. Now, Prom Night is, in my opinion, a bit of an overrated movie. It's a little bit on the slow side, and it's not nearly as good as it should be. There's a bit of a mystery that's not terribly compelling. Uh, some of the kills are good, though. It stars Jamie Lee Curtis from Halloween, but this movie is nowhere near. Nowhere near as good as Halloween. And that's maybe part of the problem, is that you can't help it in your mind compare it to Halloween. It's decent. It's not bad. But there is a following for this movie that is maybe a little more fervent than they should be for it. I want to set expectations if you're checking out uh, Prom Night for the first time. It's not amazing, but it is noteworthy. It is well-known. It is well-loved. So uh, if you haven't seen it, it's worth checking out. I don't think it's bad. It's just not as good as people uh, praise it to be. It's not as iconic as people want to make it to be. Um, it also has a, a remake uh don't bother. Uh, it's got Brittany Snow in the remake. I like Brittany Snow a lot because uh, I think she's really good, but you don't need to see that remake. Just skip that. Next extra credit film we're going to mention is The Stepfather. Now, The Stepfather is an interesting one because it's a slasher film that deals with a man who uh, who jumps from family to family. He, he ingratiates himself into the family as the stepfather, and then when they don't live up to his moral standards, usually winds up murdering them. It's a great premise, and it works really, really well, in part because Terry O'Quinn plays the titular stepfather, and he's remarkably creepy in this. This was uh, before he got famous in uh, in Lost, for example, or several other movies. He's got one of those faces that you've seen pop up everywhere, but this is the first thing I remember seeing him in, and he is super creepy in it. He carries this movie, and he carries it well. The stepfather is a tremendous amount of fun. There are some sequels to the movie that... Uh, uh, most people haven't seen. They're, they're not really well known and they're out of print. Uh, and then there's a remake that many people have seen and everybody pretty much universally says is bad. Um, I don't know if it's bad, but it's it's nowhere near as good as the original and it's largely forgettable as evidenced by the fact that I don't really remember it. So skip the remake, stick with the original, and check out the original for sure. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth a watch. It almost made the, the horror movie sell this. I, I, it paid me to put it into the extra credit, but I had to make a cut somewhere and, and then Stepfather is where I was at, but definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Last extra credit movie I'm going to mention is All the Boys Love Mandy Lane starring Amber Heard, who at the time of this recording is a bit of a controversial figure, but is a talented actress. Um, here's the thing about All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. This movie was made uh, a long time ago and then sat on a shelf for a long time. And there was a lot of buzz about the movie and how great it was and a big push to finally get it to be released. And eventually it finally got released. And by the time I saw it, I just kind of shrugged my shoulders. Uh, and I think it was because the hype was too great for it. There has been buzz for years about it and how good it was. So that by the time I actually saw it, the, the, the hype was too high. And it didn't live up to the hype. It's by no means a bad movie. It's pretty good. I actually like it. A lot of other people like it less than me, but I think for the same reason. I think that it just didn't live up to the hype. There doesn't seem to be a lot of affection for this movie, but it's, it's well made. And um, I don't want to get too into the plot of it and spoil anything, but... I think a lot of people, by the time it came out or by the time it was released, kind of saw the plot points coming or felt like it's been tire tired out or, or, or played out. Um, so maybe that part is part of why there's not a lot of love for it. I, I do like the movie. I think it's good. I just wish that it hadn't been built up so much. I probably would have a deeper affection for it if it hadn't been so built up. But it's become kind of notorious because of that. It's something that is... Uh, 
uh, a well-known horror film because of the fact that it was a little bit disappointing. So in that sense, uh, I, I put it on the list and I didn't bring it up here as a noteworthy film for you to check out just because uh, it might be worth knowing what this movie is all about because people do still tend to talk about it from time to time. So that's going to bring an end to our exploration of the slasher subgenre of horror. There's probably several movies that didn't make this video that probably should have. I can probably rattle off several myself that I wish I could have put on this video, but our format dictates that we keep it narrowed down. Uh, if you have some that you think really, really deserve to be on here, put them down in the comments below and we'll discuss them. That said, there's a good chance a lot of the slasher movies that you might mention wind up in other spots in the horror movie syllabus. As I said, this is my favorite subgenre of horror, so I'm always trying to find ways to squeeze slashers into other subgenres. And since there's so much overlap in the various subgenres, it's usually pretty easy to find a way to squeeze one of them in here and there. So as we go on and explore the horror movie syllabus further, you'll probably see some of your favorite slashers pop up in other spaces. But either way, let us know what you think in the comments below. With that, thank you for your attendance and class dismissed.